Hello friends. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these. It's a 3D printed box printed with wooden filament. And it's got this nice pattern on it, almost like a woven wood basket. Today my microphone was off, so I'm going to voice over this video. Anyway, look at the basket. Can you see the weaving pattern on there? pretty nice how the sheen glimmers in the light when you turn it. Perhaps this sort of technique can enhance your 3D prints. Anyway, those jokes were much more funny on the first recording. I'm going to go into CAD. As you might know, they have recently added this new tool here, it's called Emboss, that lets you take a 2D sketch and emboss, so cut or extrude it out of a curved surface instead of a flat one. So here I've used uh, the rectangular pattern tool to make this naive 2D uh, weaving pattern that I'm going to use the emboss tool to wrap it around this curved surface here. See how the corners get wrapped around correctly like that. I used this for the puzzle that I showed you in my last video. But what say you want to make something more three-dimensional? Can you see how these bands of weaving are rounded on the edges as if they were woven together? Well, you could just replicate this object all over to make this sort of long wall in one dimension. And then you'd have to work out how to wrap those around the corners manually, make these round shapes and so on. Instead I'm going to use this sheet metal. It's a bit of a cheat because it allows you to wrap this sort of three-dimensional features around rounded corners. So here is the original shape of my basket. It's made out of a thin piece of sheet metal here represented in wood colors. And you can unfold it like this to make it flat. See? And on this flat plane, I'm going to add all these intricate 3D details. And when I refold it, all the details get warped and transformed and mutilated around the corners as if they were made on a steel sheet. This basket is where I keep my salt, by the way. So let's say you want to make this box into a woven basket. Go into the cheat metal workspace. I'm going to add a sketch and using the box as a reference, I'm going to replicate one of its corners like this. Use the flange tool to make a flange out of that one corner sketch piece. You can see how it's already curved it. These sheet metal flanges, they can't do sharp corners, so everything gets rounded like that. Now, we can take this flange and unfold it, if I can find, there it is, unfold. And you can see how the round corner has been folded into a flat plane like that. After this, you're free to work on this flat piece as you will. So you can add any pattern or 3D shape on top. And once you're done with your modifications, you can find the refold button up there. And see how the time space has been warped? Everything goes around the corner smoothly like that. But hold on a minute. Can you look at the B and the S and the C? They seem like they're stretched horizontally. So something's going on. See, what has happened is the outside shapes have to stretch and the insides have to squish in order to accommodate for this time space warping that's going on. So whatever is on your outer edge of your design gets stretched and the inside corner gets squished like this. In fact, there's only one plane of this steel plate that doesn't get stretched nor squished and that's it, right in the middle. You can think of it as a bendy straw that has to 
expand on the outside and stretch on the inside. This is not very good for our basket design because on a woven basket the individual strips of wood wouldn't stretch on the corners. Can you see? If you follow any one of these bands it seems to unnaturally stretch and make a little curve there. You can kind of simulate it with a piece of tape and see how it's not following a natural line there. Luckily there is a way to fix this. So in the cheat metal workspace you can go in and modify the sheet metal rules. So it happens that we're using like a simulated version of steel plate here and you can modify its settings and here it is it's called K factor. This K factor is just the intrinsic property of every material that bends of whether it likes to squish or to stretch. Here's a bendy straw with a K factor of zero. It doesn't like to squish but it likes to expand on the outside so you can see the ridges on the outside are quite far apart. If I change that to one now the outside likes to keep the same but the inside likes to squish. And now back to our basket I'm going to make the K factor 1 because I want the outside face to remain intact unmutilated and I don't care about the insides. That's because the weaving pattern is going to be on the outside face. All right, that's enough theory of K factors and bending properties. Let's go and make the woven basket pattern on top of this corner. So I'm going to inset the middle of the corner like this so I can fill in this void uh, between these lips with the basket design. Unfold that and create our sketch. I'm going to make the basket design out of these small diamonds. In Finnish we call these licorice shapes because I guess we had more candies going around than we did precious stones when we were naming our geometric shapes. Now I need to duplicate this over the face in a pattern but before I start I need to figure out how many I need of these. I want the pattern to repeat so it should be a whole number of diamonds over the whole distance of this corner. For that I'm going to measure this distance between these two points. It's a funny number because there's pi involved there somewhere. I copy that number and when I'm moving my diamond over I'm going to make it a whole fraction of that number. So here I'm dividing it by 8 and go down by the same amount as well. And there's our first two diamonds. Next, let's chamfer these diamonds and change their lengths a little bit to make them more like weaving bands. And now we're ready to duplicate them over the whole area. So choose these bodies and for the spacing of this rectangular pattern I'm going to use the same number that we got from earlier. There's two diamonds so I need to multiply it by 2 to get the correct distance there. X and Y is the same, so I'm copying this over. You see how it's starting to look correct? I think those are the correct numbers. So add a few more copies and now it's covering the whole piece. It's also spilling out, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an extrude from this face here, that's the you know, where these things are supposed to be confined to. And instead of joining, I'm going to do intersect. It's not often that you get to use the intersect, but it's pretty nice here, where it's only leaving those ones that were within the same area there. Um, some of them didn't get cut, so let's hide those away. There we are. It's starting to look pretty promising. Now let's join these together with the combine tool into one single body. So those weaving band pattern objects are going to be merged into this cheat metal 
flange. And when we refold it, look, it's morphed around the corner perfectly. So the outside face is unstretched, all those round details are kept and warped in time space, just as you would expect. And finally, we can duplicate it over the four corners with the circular pattern and we get our full completed basket. I have no idea why it ended up on its side like that. It's a bug with Fusion, I guess. Anyway, I think it's a pretty cool idea to decorate your 3D prints like this because it helps hide the printed artifacts and the layer lines somewhat. And once you've spent the effort once, the 3D printer does the rest for you. And this is where I realize how dark it has already become, so it is time to say thank you for watching and see you next time.